Hey everybody, it's Santina and Will from Revel Recycles here in Sydney, Australia. We want to start this video by saying thank you so much. We totally have 100 subscribers after last week's video. So that makes us feel pretty good about investing time in doing these videos. Thank you so much for following along. When we decided we were going to do this YouTube channel, we spent a lot of time looking at the existing videos that are out on YouTube now. One of the things that came from that is we decided we really don't want to be another company just spruiking our latest product. While certainly we are going to be spruiking our products and we'd like you to buy our stuff, uh, we want to do more than just show you here's my latest goodie, here's how you bolt it on, here's what it sounds like or what it does. Um, from a long history in technical training and running service classes for dealers, we know that not everybody is at the same level of information about how various component systems on the motorcycles function. Uh, and one thing we know for sure is that you don't know what you don't know. So as we go through this series of videos, we are going to, for every system that we talk about, we're gonna get a little more involved in um, how that functions, what it's designed to do, uh, why you would change it, what you're going to get from changing it, why you would choose one change over another for a specific use. Uh, and we're going to hopefully better enable you to make good choices about the performance products that you put on your motorcycle. So let's get into it. All right, welcome to Exhaust Systems 101. Uh, in order for us to talk about the function of an exhaust system, you really have to understand how a four-stroke engine works and a little about four-stroke theory. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, we're going to put a link to an animation in the description of this video that we think does a really good job of explaining how four-stroke works and visually it's really good because it shows you what happens with the air coming in, what the engine does with that, and what happens as it's going out. It's very uh, graphically colored and, and it just does a really good job. Uh, so it is, the, the job of the exhaust system is to move that combustion chamber byproduct that happens after the fuel and air has been burned and made power, as the piston turns around and comes back up and the exhaust valve opens, it has to move that combustion byproduct out into the atmosphere. Uh, it does that by moving it through the exhaust system, and the interesting thing is that when the piston moving up creates high pressure that then draws that out to the ambient pressure outside, but when that pulse of exhaust reaches the end of the exhaust system, the pressure outside tries to climb back up the exhaust system, uh, and they call that reversion. And it, in a lot of circumstances, it then meets the next exhaust pulse coming out, and you've got a collision, and you've got to manage that. Now, that's all very different at 1,000 RPM than it is at 7,000 RPM. It, it is literally a pulse that has to be managed and you have to manage the reversion that goes with it. So exhaust science is a lot more involved than that, but that's sort of the key element you need to understand when you're thinking about exhaust system design to improve the performance of your motorcycle. For example, we've got two 865s here. We got a scrambler with an SNS two into one system on it uh, and our drag bike with wide open drag pipes on it. Now, those are both designed for very specific use. That scrambler makes torque really early and holds torque nearly all the way through its RPM range. But it probably doesn't make quite as much top end horsepower as the drag bike. The drag bike, on the other hand, doesn't make good low end torque at all because we don't need it to. It's all about how much horsepower can it make at the top, right? Uh, if you were to take the exhaust systems off those two motorcycles and swap them, neither one of them would do what it was designed to do. So your choice for an exhaust system is really critical based on what you're going to be doing with a motorcycle. Uh, and research and development in exhaust makes a huge difference. Uh, there are a lot of exhaust systems out there on the market and some of them are really nice and really well made. Uh, but uh, a lot of them are made based on here's what we've got, here's a core that works, uh, it looks cool and it sounds great. Well, it looks cool and sounds great isn't necessarily the criteria for a performance exhaust system. What is critical is that you decide and define what you want the motorcycle to do and choose an exhaust system based on that. So welcome to our first in a series about everything high performance 650. Today we're going to discuss the most asked about item on the motorcycle and that is exhaust systems. 
we want to give you some options. We're going to tell you what your alternative options are for exhaust systems, how much they cost, how complex they are to install them, and what sort of results that you can expect. I want to start by just introducing you to the stock muffler. This monster is what comes on the 650. This muffler comes in number one for two categories. First of all, number one for weight. It weighs 5.2 kilos each, which is massive. And also it comes number one for cost. The replacement set of stock mufflers is gonna run you about 2000 Australian dollars. So definitely the most expensive of all the options we're gonna give you. Inside your muffler, it looks like this. This is clearly a muffler that was designed by government committee. We've got honeycomb catalytic converters, we've got baffles and insulation. It is a very well-made muffler. It's thick metal. It is designed to last the lifetime of your motorcycle, but it's quiet and heavy. So if you wanna look for something high performance, probably not the best choice. Next, I wanna to talk to you about this guy. This is a universal fit muffler, and this one's quite famous, I think. We fit it to our friend Rob's bike a while back, and Rob has his own YouTube channel, Throttle Down Under. That video has been seen hundreds of thousands of times. We probably get two requests a week about this exhaust. Now, this muffler comes number one in a couple categories as well. Number one for least expensive. A pair of these costs about 260 bucks. It also comes in first for lightweight, less than a kilo, very light. Now, the $260 isn't a real true cost of this exhaust. You're gonna need some additional components to fit it. So when we say universal fit, what we really mean is it doesn't actually fit anything. It's, you have to make it work. You're gonna need heat shields, you're gonna need muffler clamps, you need heat shield clamps, and you're going to have to manufacture some items to make this fit the motorcycle. So I'm gonna let Will get into fitment on the motorcycle. Okay, it's time to take a look at what's involved in replacing the mufflers on your motorcycle. For starters, you gotta get the original equipment muffler off. And to do that, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench and two 12 millimeters. You start with this heat shield. There's a 10 millimeter fastener under the bottom. And there are two clips, one on the muffler, one on the header, holding this heat shield in place. You have to push the heat shield towards the front of the motorcycle to get it off. All right. Then you've got a clamp under here with a 12 millimeter fastener, uh, and it's a bolt through, so you'll likely have to hold the back side of it to loosen the clamp. And you've got the same 12 millimeter fastener holding the muffler to the frame with a nut behind it. All right. When that's all spun off, you just slip that bolt out. The muffler now will sometimes be a little difficult to work off the head pipe. And there you go. Now, the first thing you'll notice is uh, the first thing I'll point out is there, this header pipe is 40 millimeters and the muffler is 45. So there is a gasket that goes between the header pipe and the muffler. And you're not going to be able to salvage that gasket because when it comes out, it is almost always stuck in the muffler. Occasionally you'll find it stuck to the exhaust pipe, uh, but you're not going to successfully get it out of there. It's soft and when you try to remove it, uh, it will get destroyed. So if you're going to change mufflers to a set of mufflers that uses the gaskets, you'll have to have a new set of exhaust gaskets. Okay, so let's take a look at what is involved in fitting a universal muffler. Uh, for starters, um, there are a whole lot of different styles of these mufflers. And some of them come with clamps, some of them don't, some of them come with brackets, some of them don't. Uh, but generally, the clamps and the brackets that these come with aren't what you want to run on your motorcycle. Uh, the clamps that come with these are very often just soft steel and when you clamp them down they don't actually do a good job of clamping and they won't hold for a long time. The brackets that come with most of these are just a soft, they're chrome, 
and they're cute, but they're just a soft mild steel and they very often, you'll have to bend and drill uh, to make them work and they very often, uh, vibration just tears them apart and they break. So the brackets that come with these mufflers aren't really a good way to go. Uh, we use uh, a much heavier stainless steel clamp on all of our universal mufflers and we use a nice thick heavy stainless steel bracket that is pre-cut uh, to work for various situations. The universal mufflers are almost always uh, inch and three quarter inside diameter so they will fit with uh, the stock header pipe uh, and a genuine Royal Enfield exhaust gasket. Um, you will also, for these universal mufflers, after you've fitted them, you'll see that there's still this ugly tab weldment uh, here on the exhaust pipe, uh, and it really looks amateurish if you bolt mufflers on there and leave that exposed. Uh, uh, people that are really into the details of bikes just go, ew, when they see one like that. So uh, it's really pretty ugly. So if you're using a universal muffler, you're going to need a heat shield to cover that as well so quite a bit involved in fitting that and with these stock header pipes this pipe actually bends outward and then bends back in again so getting a heat shield fitted on this left side pipe uh, can be tricky the right side is much straighter so it's not so bad but fitting one on the left side can be tricky so let's have a look at what that looks like So once you have all the right components put together and you've verified that everything fits, it's time to actually do the installation. So we're starting with, I've already put my gasket in the muffler and I've sealed off the joint on the inside with some sealant. We're going to, before we start to assemble things, we're going to put the bracket on the muffler because it's a little hard to get to once it's in place. Not going to tighten that down, just going to run it down so that it will hold the bracket in place. We're going to slip the clamp onto the muffler. And before we put the muffler on, we're going to put the bands in the heat shield and slide the heat shield up onto the header. Now you can open these hose clamps and put them around the head pipe, but that has a tendency to scratch things. So if it's possible, I really prefer to put it all together first and slide this heat shield up on the header so that it's there when you're ready to tighten it all down. So with the heat shield in place, the clamp in place, and the bracket in place, we're gonna slide this assembly together. Be sure that it's all the way up so it's home on the head pipe. Now, we're not gonna tighten this joint until we've lined up this bracket, which needs to come slightly out. And on the left-hand side of the motorcycle, it happens that with this pipe, we don't need any spacers. But because of the way the pipes are bent, on the right-hand side, uh, you'll need a little bit of a spacer between the muffler and the mount. So, all the fasteners are in place now. We just want to run everything down where it's hand-tight. And we'll start with being sure that all of the clamps line up and will fit where they need to go. We're going to want this clamp to clamp the entire clamping area of the muffler. So we don't want it off the front of the muffler at all. We want it square on so that it's clamping all of the slots cut in the muffler. That's pretty good right there. That means the heat shield will go right there. So that all looks pretty good. We'll just snug that to sort of hold it in place. Yep. All right, that all looks like it's about where it needs to be. So I'll start by tightening this bolt and work my way that way. We'll start at the back, work our way to the front. Tighten this guy up. So the rear muffler mount is fixed now. We'll tighten the muffler clamp. Make sure it's still lined up. There we go. 
And finally, we'll snug down the heat shield. Bring that heat shield around. And there you have it. And the other thing that you need to know about fitting any and all exhaust components gets people in trouble all the time, especially chrome and stainless steel, uh, any kind of exhaust components. Before you start the motorcycle, be sure and wipe your fingerprints off. Your fingerprints are salty, and if you leave greasy, salty fingerprints on a chrome exhaust system and start it up, when it gets hot, those greasy, salty fingerprints are now there forever. Okay, at the risk of sounding like an SNS commercial, I want to talk for a minute about the SNS muffler. Um, we like it better than everything else on the market for a number of reasons, and first among those is the research and development. Uh, SNS has been working with Royal Enfield since nearly the beginning on the 650 Twin, so they've got a leg up on everybody else uh, for R&D for an exhaust system for these bikes. Um, we know for a fact that these mufflers work. They are super simple to fit. They absolutely, they're high quality. Uh, they're well made. They're a nice heavy material. Uh, they are much lighter than the stock mufflers. Uh, they come in two varieties. First is the race only, and then there's a 50 state street legal version. They both look identical in stainless, um, except that the race only actually says race only here. I don't have a stainless race only in the building at the moment because uh, they're out of stock, but they are absolutely identical to this. One of the nice features of the SNS muffler is that it has the heat shield built in, so you don't need any separate heat shield for it. And they literally use the stock bracket and the stock clamp and they just bolt on directly in place of the stock muffler, so they are super simple to fit. Now, the only real difference between the street legal version and the race only version is that the street legal has a honeycomb catalytic converter in it. So it's a little bit heavier than the race only muffler, but it still produces a really nice note. It has a decibel reducer in it, and if you choose to take that decibel reducer out for track day, it makes a really authoritative note, even with the catalytic converter in it. If you're going to put a set of mufflers on your street-ridden motorcycle, you really should consider a set of these 50-state street legals. Uh, they work well. They will, still, uh, they will still give you the performance you need, and they're not nearly as likely to get you in hot water. The uh, street legal stainless version is about $1,200 Australian. The race only muffler in stainless is about 900 Australian dollars. And we do these mufflers, this is a race only in ceramic black. We do ceramic black and ceramic silver. Uh, and the race only version in a ceramic coating is about $1,300. Uh, and the big difference with a race only is uh, it's really pretty straight through. Uh, it has a very carefully designed core. It makes a beautiful note. Uh, and absolutely bolts on torque onto a stock motorcycle uh, and will aid uh, all of the other SNS products as you, you know, as you build up big bores and cams uh, from SNS. It absolutely complements that uh, and will go right along. So it's an investment, uh, that muffler investment can carry you right on through your whole project. All right, so now we're going to talk about fitting the SNS muffler, and this isn't going to take long because it's pretty straightforward. As I said, this uses the stock original equipment bracket, and we've already torqued those bolts in, so the bracket onto the muffler. You need uh, a new exhaust gasket uh, because you definitely will destroy the old one. You just slip this gasket into the muffler, and you'll use the original equipment clamp. This will only go on one way. It's got a little nub here that stops you from putting it on backwards. So you just drop that clamp over, then you take the whole assembly, slide it up on the head pipe gently, Oops. and knock both of your rubber things out. Then these guys dampen it between the muffler mount and the frame, and you just line the bolt up, slide her through. Put a nut on the back side and you'll go ahead and tighten this clamp first 
We'll run it down. And then click off torque on it. You'll probably find torque specs somewhere that say 10 newton meters. We like to run these up a little tighter so they don't ever come loose. We run the 15. And then you can tension the clamp, roll it around so that it's not so unsightly, sticking directly out the side. Get a wrench on the back side. And there you go. Done. Too easy. Now you're ready to go ride. Okay, mufflers is only half the exhaust system. The other part we have to talk about is the header pipe. The original equipment Royal Enfield headers on the twins are a double wall pipe. And the beauty of that is that the chrome outer pipe is never really exposed to full exhaust temperatures. So it will stay chrome basically forever. Uh, cosmetically, they're a great pipe. They're very, they are kind of heavy, but they're very well made. So if you're just riding your motorcycle on the street, commuting back and forth, uh, the stock header pipe is just fine. It, it uh, will make good torque, nice broad torque band, very rideable motorcycle. Uh, no reason to replace your header pipe if you're just going to be riding back and forth to work. However, if you're going to try to develop real horsepower, now there's a problem. The original equipment header pipe and this weldment at the bottom here has a honeycomb catalytic converter. That is a restriction to horsepower. In fact, we've seen um, 865s with these stock head pipes on that'll only make about 55 horsepower. And they really ought to be making a lot more than that. And the restriction is right here. So if you're going to try to make real horsepower, you got to get rid of this catalytic converter. So the solution to the restricted original equipment header pipe is an open header. We've developed uh, this header set. Uh, it, they're Australian made. They're available in stainless, ceramic black, and ceramic silver. They are a different bin from the original equipment. We've done the bin so that it follows the frame exactly. Instead of going out and coming back like a stock header, we just reckon it's cosmetically better. They are a direct bolt-on replacement. They bolt right into place on the stock bike. They are made specifically to go with the SNS mufflers, which, you know, they'll go with any muffler that will fit the stock bike. But these, as you can see, match the SNS finish exactly, and they just all bolt right on. There's no need for a gasket between them. Uh, it's all inch and three-quarter pipe. You can absolutely feel the horsepower difference uh, at the higher RPMs. These pipes clearly make a difference. Um, when we built these, we designed them with both the 12 millimeter bung for the original O2 sensor, uh, as, well, as well as an 18 millimeter bung for a wide band sensor. So if you want to run, uh, check your air fuel ratio at the racetrack on the dyno, or if you want to run an auto tuner, you can do that with these pipes. Now, if you've got uh, another requirement, like you want a set of pipes that go straight back instead of coming up, uh, you want some shorter, longer, you want two into ones, uh, whatever the case might be, depending on what kind of racing you're doing, uh, if you're flat tracking, hill climbing, road racing, drag racing, whatever, talk to us about what it is you need because one size definitely doesn't fit all. Uh, and uh, you should make a plan for what you're going to do. Don't piecemeal your performance work. Plan start to finish uh, what it is you're trying to accomplish and piece together the parts that work best to make that happen. Uh, if you have questions about that, happy to chat about it anytime. And remember, if you ain't having fun, you're doing it wrong.